welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today we welcome back on the show Diana Londoño. She is a urologist and she wrote to Kevin MD article Grieving Our Collective Loss with Compassion. Diana, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. We'll get into your article in a little bit, but first off, can you share your story and journey to where you are today? Yeah, I'm a urologist in Los Angeles, and you know, I, I basically grew up in Mexico City, came to the States when I was about 12, did all my training here in the U.S., and practiced both in Miami and now back in Los Angeles. And now I'm just trying to discover myself a little more, learn about myself, been doing some writing and grateful to your platform, uh, especially uh, for allowing me the chance to, to write, explore myself, and also in the journey of having become a life coach. So I'm excited about that journey as well. So I can imagine you're pretty busy in urologist. So tell me, why did you take that time to, to write and how does that contribute to your professional career? Well, the, the time to write really came from kind of my second round of burnout that where, you know, many of us, you know, 40% plus, 50% plus of women in medicine are, you know, burned out. And on the second round, it really was a time for me to, you know, figure out how to get out of it. What was it? Get out of it. And life coaching did that. And when I started with life coaching, life coaching is really spending time in awareness and slowing down the mind, understanding what our triggers are, what our thoughts are, what our beliefs are. And it, it really helped me explore, again, what my triggers are and what my needs are and why those weren't being met and why I was sort of getting burned out. So for me, the ability to have a voice is really important to be heard is really important. And when it's not happening in another medium or another place, then it really was leading to my own sort of burnout emotionally, my kind of like your soul. So writing is an outlet where it doesn't have to be mediated by other people in some ways. Like, you know, you, you, it doesn't have to be at work or at home situation. You could give those thoughts uh, or those ideas and share them again with a wider audience, the world, whatever that may be. And that really was just very healing for me to express myself. So that's, you know, not so much for a professional, but really like a personal, because you can't thrive professionally or at home if you're not well within, right? So that sort of time to spend for myself to fill my cup was really important and has just really been healing for me. Can you give us an example of some of the things that you've written about? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the topics, you know, are not really urological per se i'm a urologist but i really talk about you know things that are not you know so fancy sometimes like compassion and ego and you know burnout fear you know emotional scars you know kind of what what helps you know what what is going and lurking be, be, between all of us as, as humans and i also talk about things about movement and and how that impacts your joy and, and really they're not like medicine per se but there are things that are just human qualities and talk about like our humanity so i think the theme overall things i talk about is you know humanity and basic needs and basic beliefs that we all have you know otherwise we'd be robots so if we don't talk about those things that are core to a human you know they need to be love you know the fears we have you know those are just common fears and beliefs and things that are raw to a human you know those are, like i said we just become robots and and in medicine i think we got to go back from being like more robotic and more hum human and understand that what we do is with people and we got to be at the core of not forgetting that and not just going down an algorithm or a prescription or, you know, you know, ta -ta 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 -ta, but who's in front of us? What are they saying to us? What's important to them? What are they fearing? Because we can all relate to that. And that brings our humanity back. All right, let's talk about one of the articles that you've written on Kevin MD. It's titled Grieving Our Collective Loss with Compassion. Now, for those who didn't get a chance to read your article, can you just walk my audience through it and share the story of why you decided to write it? Yeah, I, I, it, it's been a time of like a little bit of reflection. And I sort of go back between a little bit of like sort of activism and that energy where you're sort of fired up and, you know, angry about things that are injustices, but then also time of reflection. And it's a little bit of a balance in a way of, kind of like a masculine and feminine energy and not per se by gender, but just the energies where are more like laser focus, you have a goal and that's more of the masculine, but also then the reflective and more nurturing and talking about what the feelings are. And that's a little bit more of the feminine. And I think for this one was more of that feminine energy and re sort of just 
stopping and reflecting, you know, where are we going? And this is really talking about, you know, kind of like the last, in, in the context of, you know, with COVID, because mm-hmm. right? we spend the last two years sort of yelling at each other. We continue to do so, like yelling at each other, saying, mm-hmm you're crazy, you know, whether you're pro or anti-vaccine or whatever the issue is with COVID and we're just yelling at each other and we're kind of getting nowhere. And when we yell, when we're angry, I mean, the actual chemical changes in your brain are ones that you cannot process information. You cannot truly actually think or learn new information because you're angry, but you kind of close off and you're not receptive. And when you change a thought or a feeling of compassion and compassion really means sort of like love for the self and knowing that we're human and not perfect. And you can see that in other people, the energy is so different, right? Like we let our sort of guard down. We find commonality with the other person. We don't have to agree, but you can find commonality and like sort of shared love or idea because mm-hmm. at the both ends of whatever your ideas are about COVID, you know, there's obviously a fear. Yes. But there's also like, we have to understand like in a way it's coming from a love of something. Um, So we all have a love and a passion, but we're like yelling at each other instead of like coming Mm -hmm. together. So it was really just more a reflective piece that, you know, we really have to change the narrative because if it was working well, then yes, we should continue yelling, but that's not really working, but it does really make it like clickbait, of course, because you're going to click on the article that is inciting that makes you, it's like dangerous, right? Like, Mm -hmm. oh, COVID are not safe or COVID are safe. Yeah, that's dangerous. You're all riled up. You'll write a huge commentary on uh, social media or whatever it is and yell at your neighbor. But when we talk about compassion, we were like, oh yeah, that's not interesting. And it's such an interesting sort of experiment because, you know, other articles are written, you know, so many shares, of course, but then you write about compassion and like the shares are so little. And it's not that, you know, it, it's, it's not an important topic. It's just, it doesn't get people to click because it's not threatening to you to talk about that. So you just kind of, your human brain, that's how we work. Mm-hmm. We just like skip over it, but it's so important if we want to move forward and evolve and get to a place where we're not destroying each other, we have to talk about compassion and feelings. So I think, you know, that's why it was really important for me to write it. And I appreciate obviously the platform because again, it's probably not popular. People don't click it, but we got to stop and think, you know, what are we really doing every day in our life? How are we showing up? Mm-hmm. So you talk about our collective loss. You talk mm-hmm. about all the conflict that's been going on, especially during the pandemic. Can you share a personal story where you encountered such conflict? Well, I mean, I think, I mean, we just all lose something. We lose our identity of self. We lose what we think, you know, we should be doing. And those are sort of like, sort of like our manuals, like what we should be doing. And when we go down that rabbit hole of like, what should I be acting at? What should I be doing? Then we start having a lot of these like negative sort of thoughts of shame and doubt. And then, you know, we sort of start then kind of going into burnout too, because we're shaming ourselves. And, And so you know, I, I guess a specific one I can, but it's just like the whole collective of like the burnout, you know, mm. it was like the shame I should be doing this, you know, I'm af- afraid. And, you know, you start going into cycles of thinking and, and then, then you become, you know, you're just in a bad place at the end of it. But when you start thinking, you know, again, compassion, like it's okay. I'm human and having these thoughts, you know, it's okay. Gratitude, uh, because gratitude and anxiety, they cannot coexist. They're actually polar opposites. If you have like a gratitude and you have some self-love, then that anxiety and those other thoughts are going to go away. And those changes in your brain really will happen and you will feel completely different. You will act completely different. So I think when we start kind of putting the lens of how we view things, whether we look at loss or we look at what we gain. And that's what this article talks about. Yes, we can talk about all the things we lost, but let's also focus on all the things we've gained because there's a lot of things we have gained. And when we look at life of whatever it is or COVID and the lens of what we've gained, your outlook of life will be so much different. Your day will be very different because then you're not finding evidence of all the negative like loss, 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 but we're finding evidence of like what you're appreciative, what you've gained, the gratitude. And again, gratitude and anxiety don't fall in the same category. Then you just feel so much different. Again, changes in the brain, gratitude, compassion, then you start activating, you know, oxytocin, serotonin, Mm -hmm. all these chemical changes, and you just feel so much different. Right. So, so just that's sort of like the collective sort of thought that I wanted to have about this article. 
So take us through a step-by-step -step example or a, or a case study. So you talk about things like gratitude, self-love, compassion, vulnerability. I think that's difficult for some, some physicians to, to grasp and understand. So maybe take us through an example of how physicians can specifically achieve some of those goals that you talk about. Well, I think it starts with a pause because mm -hmm. our training is, again, it's sort of like, it kind of comes back to maybe like, the leadership, right? How is the leadership leading us in healthcare? And I do think it's a very, obviously, go, 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 get there, get there, get there. There's no time to stop. We're laser focused to be the best of this research, best of the surgery, best in, you know, it's very like laser focused, which is very important, but there has been no time or space to get to the other energy where we pause, where we talk about like feelings, how we talk about how, you know, what is happening, how we're connecting. And that's really important to have a balance. Cause if you don't have a balance, then we just tread, tread, tread. And like, who cares what's in the path? So the way that physicians can do that is just really finding time in the day to do this. And research, there's research studies talking about research that like 10 minutes of whatever self-care for you is really changes your whole chemistry in your brain and how you feel for the day. So 10 minutes is really what you spend in Starbucks waiting for your coffee mm -hmm. or, you know, a million things that we do all day that, you know, we just take for granted. And then we say we don't have time, but we really have time because you probably scroll on social media for 44 minutes instead of like those 10 minutes, you could have listened to something that is inspiring to you, whether it's like music or a podcast, or you drink the coffee outside away from the kids because you need that time to recenter or you go for a 10 minute walk. And that time for you it's really important to refill your cup to give you like that energy to like go throughout the day and it'd be time to be quiet and just think about things without plowing through and it's 10 minutes you know it's very easy or when you wake up you set out like a little intention like what am I grateful for today you know what can I, it can be small or it can be huge but that intention for the day sets the tone for the whole day and or when you go to bed at night like how, what, well, what went well today? You know, what can I be grateful for? I mean, we can all do that in two seconds. And again, they're like little changes, little changes, little things we start doing for ourselves that really will make a big impact. Um, Cause again, like, just like any pilot, you move one degree in your coordinates, you end up in a completely different place. So small changes have big impacts. So you don't have to get complicated. Just small gratitude for the morning, time to pause, you know, being like less reactive about everything and just being like, oh, like, why am I being triggered by what somebody's telling me? Like, what am I thinking about that? That's making me want to yell back, right? Like pausing, but we've never given that time to pause. We're talking to Diana Londonio. She's a urologist and she wrote the Kevin MD article, grieving our collective loss with compassion. Diana, what are some of your take-home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? I think the take-home message is, you know, give yourself some time for you because we give, 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 and we never fill our own needs. And that's why we then go down the path of like, you know, burnout and feeling depleted and angry because we have been taught to just give and everybody else is more important, but like you actually are the most important person because if you're not whole and full and happy, you're not going to give to anybody else. But we're sort of sold this lie that, Oh, you just keep pushing through it. You keep doing everything with like no sleep, not eating, you know, not going to your lunch because you're taking care of more people. And then that's going to work out fine. And it doesn't work out fine because otherwise we wouldn't be in the situation with physicians and burnout or leaving medicine. So fill your cup first because you are the most important person to be able to take care of a wide group of people. So that's my number one. And just take time to pause and breathe. Obvious, right? Like we breathe all day, but I'm talking about breathing consciously. And, you know, it doesn't have to be woo-woo. Nobody has to see you. You could be in your office and close the door and just sit down, close your eyes and just breathe for three big, three big breaths and like recenter, really like activate that, like, you know, parasympathetic, your vagus nerve. You're going to feel so much more, to, you know, much better when, you know, you have calmed down and not go to the next patient encounter like more angry and more fired up, but you've slowed down. So those would be the two big ones. Take care of yourself. You know, it's really important. Breathe, right? It's uh, obvious, but you know, not, not taught that we should be doing that consciously. Diana, thank you so much for coming back on the show and sharing your time and insight. Thank you, Kevin. I really appreciate your time as well. Thank you so much.